stop, hold everything, what's all this tree-hugging hippy-dippy crap? Where's the space aliens? Hello, you joined us again in the Who Dares Rolls Clubhouse. Um, and we're taking a moment out to do a quick preview of an upcoming game from Cloud Iron Games, which is uh, Pitracore. This one, right here. Um, so this is coming from a couple of designers, which are not too shabby in the old design department. Um, there's David Chirkop, um, who's the lead designer on this, who gave us Pursuit of Happiness and Then We Held Hands. And David Turksey, who gave us last year, or was involved with Cloud Island, on Days of Ire, which was one of my most fabulously favourite things they've done. It's only just out now, so keep an eye out for that. Um, so they're both rather dashingly brilliant chaps. Um, so this is a, a game. Um, Yes, it is a game. Um, so, you know, theme. We like a bit of theme. And there's all sorts of theme around. Uh, you know, we, we've had the opportunity in board games to delve into areas that we normally don't get a chance to. So, for instance, we could be Space Marine. A vast statue of fellow Marines who deserve a good kicking. Or ninjas. Ha ha! Oh, yeah! Oh! Cut! Or in this case, as Petrocor, that will be ahead of a petroleum company as a as a what's that? We're not a cloud. Um, I'm going to play a cloud. So Petrocor, and for those of you not in the know, Petrocor actually refers to. A smell. Um, it is the smell of dry, dry ground after it's hit by rain. That sort of earthy, nutmeggy pong that we get from the ground. That sort of thing you go, hmm. Well, that's petrichor. Um, so, anyway, so what, why petrichor? What's it all to do with? Clouds, all sorts of stuff. So it's predominantly a kind of worker placement area control game with voting in it. Um, it's relatively straightforward once we get rolling um, and it's quite a whimsical theme you may even believe and it is a whimsical theme it's all quite light and fluffy like the clouds. However once you've played into this then you find a much deeper level of strategy and it can get quite cutthroat and horrific later on so bear that in mind as we dive into the the fluffy game of Petricor. So Petricor the basic principles of the game is we will be playing cards from our hand um, and they will be used to manipulate on the board is clouds that we can place. We can place little clouds on there. Um, what we're aiming to do is get the most rainfall on these randomised tiles of fields at the start of the game. Um, and we gain points by doing that. And we just that's what we're aiming predominantly to do is, is get rain through our clouds onto the fields, score those points and win the game. That's the real basics of what we're doing. So on your turn, you've very simply got the not two options, one of two options. Um, you can play a card, perform an action and vote and the voting is mandatory. Um, optionally, you can then play two matching cards, and these cards have sets on them. So you can play two matching cards, and they will allow you to take a second turn on your go. So each round has four distinct stages. So there's an action phase, there's a weather phase, there's a harvest phase, and then we clean up what's going on. Um, so let's go through those just really simply. So the frost card. Um, if you play a frost card there, what you do is you literally plop a cloud anywhere, on one of the tiles that you're on the area and you put one of your water drops into it and that's you done when you play sun action what you can do is you can take two water drops and you can place them into a cloud you already have water in if you have no clouds of water in then you can't place those water drops and you'll just move on to the next time of the game wind so the wind action allows you to move one of your clouds that you have rain already in and you can move it up, down, left, right, you can't do any diagonal moves. If you should move it into a position where there is already an existing cloud, the clouds merge and they become one. All the rain goes into one of them. And then that cloud, once it's merged, becomes a thunder cloud, uh, which we at the moment highlight with this thunder mark on there to show that it's got a quite, a, it's quite an angry crowd now. Um, clouds clashing together, they get quite grumpy. And finally, the last action you take is the rain action, and that will allow you to place two water drops and they're from any clouds that you have on the field. So any uh, of your clouds out here, you can take one water drop or two um, and drop them down to the tile below, raining onto that. Um, and we'll come on to exactly what that does and the purpose of that in one moment. Once you've taken your actions, you enter the voting stage of the game. In the voting stage of the game, you can place one of your markers 
you get to place one of your markers on one of the river spaces, depending on the card that you played during your turn. So if you played it on the sun, you will put it on the sun thing. However, you can also choose to put it on the next clockwise weather effect if you so wish. We'll come into how or why that affects everything in a moment, but you can do that. So you can either do that, place a vote down there, or you can in fact choose to affect one of the die that were in the middle of the thing. These three dice on there, um, they have one of two uh, facings on them. They will either have vote facings, which we'll see in a moment, or they will have a harvest symbol. If they have a vote facing, then you can reduce that vote down by one point for every one of your actions, and you will gain a victory point for that. Huzzah! Uh, if the vote die is ever down to its last vote point, then it will flip to harvest die, and you score two points for doing that. Jolly good. So the weather phase. So what we do is we look at the weather spaces, the four of them which we've been voting on during the earlier part of the game, and the two of them which have the most votes will be the two spaces that activate this turn. Should the weather spaces has decided it receives the most votes, then we move that winning player's marker on the vote track along here, and that goes along there. Basically what that's doing is that's just extra victory points at the end of the game you will get. So the more further along there, the points are cumulative, they go up worthwhile doing. Other than that, then the two winning weather spaces also have effects that affect the board that we have currently out on there. So the frost weather, all light clouds become thunder clouds, regardless of how many drops are in them. The sun weather space, all players are starting in clockwise order, when that's activated is they double the amount of water drops that are in their clouds. That may have knock-on effects, which we'll go into in a moment, um, but that's temporarily what that will do. In the wind space, if selected, then what we do is players will have the option of moving their drops or other players drops that are on the board on the actual tiles um, and they can move one of them again up down left right no diagonals um, from one tile to the next and as i say it doesn't have to be their drop and finally the rain space will cause all thunder clouds not any light clouds only thunder clouds to sploosh all their watery goodness onto the tile beneath them uh, the final stage of, the, of a turn is the harvest phase, which only takes place in two conditions. Either it's the end, final end turn of a game, um, or the three dice are showing the harvest icon. What then that essentially means is we score, depending on each tile, with the amount of water we've got on there, we will score points. And that goes on the point track. And that's how that works. And that is Petricor, which, wow, what an amazing sort of idea and great concept and uh, just there's nothing like it. Um, as I said, it's this whimsical sort of idea of you controlling these clouds above these fields. So you've got this sort of split screen parallax sort of idea of area control where you're dealing on the top level with these clouds up above with the rain and they're building and they're bursting and they're raining on below. And yet below it is where the score tiles are, where there's this deeper strategy of, of first of all, the control of where the clouds are and where you're placing them or where you're gonna drop your rain and then where these points are going to score with obviously some areas will score multiple points or in the case of the coffee areas where you're tying them up with the river track to give you even more scoring options um, you're obviously scoring on the votes you're scoring on the uh, on the cards you're playing on, on the rain and, and what you've harvested and what's growing and what's not growing um, it's a it's a heady mix of just initially your your first glance of it is once you grasp the rules which aren't relatively really that difficult the rules are very straightforward um but once you get digging into it the strategies just start sort of pouring out of your head um you're looking at it and you're going wow it's like this sort of 3d sort of puzzle to try and try and decode it's not a light game considering its subject matter however it's got a very low threshold to entry so anyone can kind of pick up and play it but to people who enjoy you know gamers who enjoy those real sort of meaty decisions and getting your head around what's going on then there is a lot to just to, to absorb yourself in there's lots of opportunity for you to tactically pass um, for instance which will then shut off people's options to to play cards during their turn um, there's just the, there's lots of ways out um, the being able to play a couple of cards to play a second action or just discarding two of your separate cards to pick any action you want you're never in a cul-de-sac where you can't do what you want to do yes there's sacrifices to be made but you know there's always options there to do it um, component wise obviously this is a pre-production um, the tiles i know for a fact are going to be made bigger in the full version so these will be bigger um, because we had concerns initially over everything getting a bit cluttered but um they will be bigger tiles so you'll be able to see the scoring on there there is 
these plans as to how the clouds are going to function in the stand or how they're going to work i don't know yet that's still that's still being decided on um it worked perfectly fine with us just laying the clouds over the top of the things it, it did work fine and we were able to play it didn't distract from the gameplay um but i'm sure you know the final polished shiny version will have a, a an even better answer to that so yeah i i dig it big style dig it um it's it's got a lot going on um it's easy to pick up easy to teach easy to get playing but then that's really when you can start um, exploring where this game goes and what its possibilities are and th there is a lot here to do um yeah i absolutely recommend it i can't wait to see what the final version will look like i've enjoyed playing this version um everyone i've shown it to has loved it um and it's another win from these two david and david have done it once again um so yes petrichor Fantastic stuff. Shame about the lack of aliens. Ooh!